Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today we're going to take a look at some amazing applications designed for your Linux desktop, and specifically for GNOME. But of course, you can run them on any other desktop that you might want. We have productivity apps, we have torrent clients, we've got tons of utilities, we've got video editors, backup tools, you name it. Just like I'll name today's sponsor that also runs on Linux, but isn't made specifically for GNOME. This video is sponsored by Only Office, the free and open source Office suite that's fully compatible with Microsoft Office documents formats. Only Office has a desktop app available in virtually every packaging format you might want on Linux, but it also runs on Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. The interface is super intuitive, especially if you've been using Microsoft Office, as it's really close. And if you want to have your own Office suite in the cloud, you can also run your own only Office server and link it to Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Confluence, SharePoint, Redmine, Jira, and a lot of other services. I personally only use only Office on all my computers running Linux or otherwise, and I also have my own only Office document server linked to my Nextcloud server so I can edit documents online or offline using the desktop editors. Check out the link in the description below and give OnlyOffice a try, you won't regret it. So let's begin with Getting Things GNOME, which is a productivity app which lets you enter all your to-do list and actually make sure that you do something. It's an app that has its roots in GNOME too, but has recently seen a lot of work to look more like a recent GTK app. It lets you create tasks, of course, with start dates and due dates, as well as tags that you can create on the fly by preceding any word with the at symbol. Each task has a long description field to note any ideas you might have, and you can add checkboxes inside of each task by making a list with a hyphen. Tasks open in their own windows, so you can have multiple ones open at the same time, and every one of them can have subtasks to group things up nicely. Your to-do items can be filtered by three statuses, open, actionable, and closed. Open are basically all tasks you haven't completed, Close regroups everything you've already marked as done, and Actionable groups all tasks that are startable, as in their start date is already passed or that have no uncompleted subtasks. Basically, it shows everything you can do right now, which removes the hassle of looking through your long list of stuff to do before actually finding something you can or want to do. Now, it might just be me, but if I don't have an app that serves as my second brain and that just tells me everything I need to do and what I can offload things, my brain gets fuzzy and I forget things and I just end up not doing anything and procrastinating. So apps like GTG are crucial to making sure that I actually do some work. GTG supports plugins to send tasks via email, track time or add urgency color coding. And you can sync all your tasks through CalDAV with, for example, Google Tasks or Nextcloud. While using your computer, you might also want to listen to some tunes. But if you're like me, music streaming services just serve you the same playlists over and over again and you get tired of them. And since my music tastes are basically all over the place, the recommendation algorithms just are hit or miss all the time. That's where web radios come in, with Shortwave. It's a handy app that lets you browse web radios and listen to any music genre you want for free. It shows you the top voted stations first, as well as trending radio stations, but of course you can search for anything you might want, whether it's a genre or a station name. Once you play something, you get a nice little sidebar to let you stop playback, change the volume, sing the station details and add them to your library, or even cast your audio to another device using the Google Cast protocol. If the stream adds some metadata, the song will also be recognized and displayed, so you can add it to your own playlists or any service you might want or buy it wherever you usually buy your music from. Personally, I think ownership is dead and that renting is the future and that basically owning things Ooh, is on, a relic on, of... Okay, okay, sorry about that. Let's talk ownership then with torrents. Fragments is a torrent client and a simple one at that. It lets you download these nifty little files using that wonderful peer-to-peer -peer network. It's not something you will use if you're a complete torrent nerd, as it doesn't have a ton of options. But if your thing is more to download a file, leave it on to be seeded for a while and then remove it, then it's perfect. What do you mean you just download the file and remove it from the list without even seeding? You're a monster! Fragments still lets you pick a download location, limit the number of active downloads, turn notifications on or off, and select if you want encrypted peers or not. You can also get a few download stats. Removing a torrent also lets you delete the files if you realize that what you downloaded wasn't exactly what was promised. 
Like that time when, as a kid, I wanted to grab Star Wars and I ended up watching a very weird movie where a plumber helps a nice little lady in her underwear to fix her sink that was leaking. But now that I think about it, there wasn't much plumbing happening. I, I totally deleted the, the, the video file. Totally deleted it. If you like books, but reading makes you sleepy, maybe have some audiobooks lying around. In that case, Cozy is going to be amazing for you. Just point it to the directory where you store your audiobooks and it will auto-detect them, or you can simply drag and drop files inside the app. Cozy will auto-detect the metadata for each book and add some nice cover art. You can filter them by recently listened to, by author, or by the person reading the book, or search through your library. It can also auto-rewind the last 30 seconds of the current book when you're restarting the app to make sure you remember what happened when picking back up. When playing an audiobook, you can change the speed or put a sleep timer to stop after the current chapter or after a specific period of time. You can also jump from chapter to chapter as you please. It's a very nice and simple app that audiobookworms will love. Is that the term? Audiobookworms? Like, like bookworms? I, I don't know. I don't listen to audiobooks. They make my brain woozy and I forget everything I just listened to. Let's move on to something way more interesting. Backups. Okay, not the most fascinating thing, but you have to make backups, and for that we have Dejadup. It's made to backup your home user directory, not your whole system. But it's still pretty important to have backups of all your personal files. You can pick which folders to exclude and select a backup location, including online services like Google Drive, OneDrive, a network server, any external drive that's plugged in, or a local folder. You can password protect these backups if you want, but don't forget that password, because if you don't have it anymore, your files are toast. You can turn on automatic backups that will happen in the background and select for how long you'll keep these, although the older ones will automatically get nuked when storage space runs low. Of course, once your backups are done, restoring them is super easy, just by going to the Restore tab, where you can pick individual files to restore or just select everything. I'm not your computer mom, but you really should have backups. I really should have backups. Let's move on to virtual machines. These things are super handy to get rid of your distro hopping fevers without reinstalling your whole system or to have dev environments. And GNOME has a fantastic app for that called Boxes. Not only does it let you create a VM from the ISOs you already have in your downloads folder, but it also lets you download some ISOs directly from the app or select one yourself. You can pick the amount of RAM and disk space you want to allow the VM to use, and you're done, it's running. And if you close the VM, you can also tweak it a little bit more with enabling 3D acceleration, attributing a number of cores to it, sharing devices, or making snapshots. And that's about it. It's a very nice, very simple app, much easier to set up than VirtualBox. Oh, and it also resizes the screen space and the resolution of the VM when you resize the window itself, which is awesome. Sometimes you just need a very basic app for drawing a few things on top of a screenshot or create a pixel art masterpiece. Drawing does just that. It's basically Microsoft Paint, but for Linux. It has a basic pencil tool, it lets you draw lines, curves or shapes, you can crop the pictures, select parts of the image and move or delete them, you can add text and it also lets you scale, rotate or skew the image. Drawing also has a few filters like adding transparency or blur. More tools are even available as experimental, like a highlighter, selecting by color, or a color picker. You won't find anything too fancy like layers, and elements are locked in place once they've been drawn, so it's more for quick annotations or jotting down a few quick ideas in the form of a badly drawn thingy. Drawing can save your images as PNG, JPEG, or bitmap. Very handy tool if you're often annotating screenshots for bug reports, or if, like me, you're a total artist. If you want to start making your own videos, but you don't want to use something super complex, PTV should be right up your alley. It's more like iMovie and less like Adobe Premiere, and it's very simple to get started with. You just drag your clips to the media library, then to the timeline, and you start cutting the clips where you want to using the little toolbar on the right. It has a few nice transitions, and you can transform clips a bit with cropping, zooms, and coordinates, or just add effects to them. PTV supports all video formats that GStreamer does, so if your computer can play your clips on the video player, PTV can edit them and export to the same format. Exporting is also very easy with a few presets that you can change and save. 
It's the video editing program that I used back when I started the channel and it will definitely do the trick to let you do your handy little holiday montage that you can then inflict on unsuspecting friends when they visit you after your holidays. And now we move on to a few small utilities that will absolutely come in handy. Musai, for example, is basically Shazam for your Linux desktop. Just click the big listen button and it will recognize the song playing in the background. If you want to identify something playing on your computer and you don't have a mic, it can also listen directly to your desktop audio. Each song is added to your history and you can click it to get a web page letting you add it to various music streaming services. It's a handy tool to complete your music collection or expand on your playlist, especially in combination with shortwave for web radios that don't display the song they're currently playing. If you have to interact with text a lot, text pieces might come in handy. Just paste any text you want in it and you can then select a tool to use to transform said text and make it more usable. For example, you can remove blank lines, trailing spaces, you can escape URLs, strings or HTML, you can minify or prettify JSON or XML or even get checksums and sort lines in alphabetical order. It's not something that everyone will have a use for, but if you have to often make modifications to batches of text and just remove a few annoying things, it's going to be super useful. If you're a graphic designer or you just like fancy fonts, Font Downloader will be a cool program to add to your application's grid. It just lets you browse a huge list of online fonts and download them to your system for immediate installation. You can also just download them without installing if you want to keep them stored somewhere or share them. You can even filter fonts by alphabets if you don't use a Latin language. I discovered it recently and I love it to help me set up a computer with all the fonts I need for my day-to-day -day job. Still on the topic of graphic design, you might want to compress images. And for that, Curtail is perfect. You just drag and drop your images in, select if you want lossless compression or if you're okay with a bit of image quality loss, and it will just compress everything at once and show you the space savings. Nice to have if you run a website, for example. And if you want to check how much that compression process has affected your picture, you can use Identity. It just puts two images or videos side by side to let you compare the quality or the image or a specific part of a video to make sure that everything is okay. Super simple, but still easier and nicer than opening two image viewers side by side and resizing them to actually check the differences. If you like working with a bit of noise, but music distracts you too much, Blanket might have a solution. It lets you select a few white noises like rain, storms, wind, waves or birds and tune each one of them to get the ambiance you want to work or relax. You can craft the perfect soundtrack to let you think you're in the office or in the city if that helps you focus. Don't turn on the TV for background noise, it's all horrible stuff in there. Just listen to the sound of waves. Let's finish this with Metadata Cleaner, a super handy tool to let you remove any metadata from any file type you have. You just add the file to the list and you can see all the metadata and select to clean it, as in scrap everything out of the file itself. And if that option is a bit too nuclear for you, you can opt for lightweight cleaning and keep a few handy attributes, like letting text be selectable in PDFs or keeping the compression in images. Quite useful if you often share pictures with others online and you don't want them to have the geolocation data or any information that you're not comfortable with. And GNOME has tons more apps that are really designed to work with its graphical guidelines. Head over to circle.gnome.org to find a lot more cool tools to help you make the most out of your Linux desktop. Just like today's sponsor will help you have a Linux desktop in the first place. It's Slimbook. They're based in Valencia, Spain, and they sell Linux laptops and desktops. They have a wide range of devices covering basically all needs, all keyboard layouts, they ship worldwide, and basically they have everything you need. For example, the Slimbook One, this small form factor PC in a nice aluminum enclosure that is highly upgradable, super powerful thanks to Ryzen CPUs, and it's just going to be able to do anything you throw at it. If you want a new Linux device, just click on the link in the description below and get yours from Slimbook. They're really cool. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. If you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to my weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.